Next up, we have uh, some crazy stuff that happened. And this, I think, goes to Elon's testament. You know, Elon gets a, a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of bad kind of uh, press because of his reactions online and his kind of openness. Honestly, when you think about it, he's very candid. Um, and you know, when you've when you've reached that level, I feel like you've you've earned that right. Honestly, uh, he's not the kind of guy that that you know is going to let people do things or tell him things that he doesn't want to do or want to hear. Uh, I think he's open to feedback, but you know he also can can tell people uh, to to piss off. So he can do what he wants, um, and and that's the short answer. Here's an example though of him having those reactions, acting like that, but in a much more productive way. So uh, Consumer Reports, who I, I I mean they've had their issues with Tesla. I respect them greatly because of uh, how they go about things. If you don't know much about them, it's pretty fascinating. Like they when they buy a Model Three to test, they don't tell Tesla, hey, give me a car to test. They go buy it themselves, completely blind, you know, unbeknownst to them, and they do all of their stuff with it. So really interesting. Like they really try to be objective here. Um, and then they've had issues with Tesla in the past. Here, uh, they they fall they fell short. This was a this was published on the twenty third. Tesla Model Three falls short of a Consumer Reports recommendation, meaning it is not recommended. Um, and it was all related, or you know, one of the things was it was related to the braking distance, which is. How many feet does it take to go from 60 to zero miles per hour? Um, and so because this was longer than anyone else in their class, uh, Consumer Reports did not recommend it. And so with that, the thing that was interesting is Elon responded and said they're going to fix it via software update. So here's uh, you know kind of like the whole story here is that Elon actually spoke with them after that about the results. Uh, and then later, um, you know, he planned the, the fix. So, you know, literally uh, that same day that they, they posted this, this result that he is going to fix it. And so within a day, they, they, he saw something like this, addressed it and came back that he is actually going to make a change. So to me, um, that's kind of amazing. And here, his tweet, uh, him and his, his good buddy, Ryan McCaffrey, um, talking about it stating that the firmware fix for upgraded brake performance on standard Model 3 started rolling out yesterday, uh, should improve braking distance by 20 feet for repeated heavy braking events. Thanks, Consumer Reports, for excellent critical feedback. Okay, so think about that just for a second. The Consumer Reports has an issue with the Model 3. They published the report, they talked to Elon. Three days later, actually uh, within 24 hours, it's fixed. With the next 24 hours, it's rolling out. And then the next 24 hours, he posts this tweet. So, because you see, this was the 26th. He said it was yesterday. And then two days earlier was was the actual report that came out. Um, it's incredible. This, this is why uh, the community loves him. Um, yes, he can be uh, abrasive and, and, and say things that that upset people, but he's a real person just like you and me. Um, he's not some God or something else. He is a very real human, um, you know, and, and, and he has these things. Now he's, because of what he's done and his, his successes, it's, you can't ignore, um, you know, his ability to get things done. Like, even if you hate him, you can't, you can't deny he's accomplished some amazing things. And I think that like he's earned this right to do this. And here he is using this right, this power that he has to do something extremely positive and improve, uh, improve, you know, the consumer experience. It's just amazing. So I think this is one of the, uh, uh, like kind of a shining example of where, uh, it's, it's working kind of in his favor. Now, one thing about this, just to, to, to point out why this even matters. Um, first off, you know, for collisions and things like that, but also when you want to calculate the zero to 60 time, you actually take the braking distance time and then kind of reverse engineer it to figure out how fast you can go. Now, one of the big things that's odd about the, the braking distance is that, it, you know, there's essentially a couple things. There's the grip on the tire, the weight of the vehicle, and, and, and how much, you know, braking power can be applied. And all of those things kind of need to work in harmony. So some of the things they can't really change, right? Like, like they're not gonna go give a free tire upgrade to every Model 3 owner in order to improve it. So the other things that they can control via software, I think is where Tesla has a unique advantage over others. So this to me is, is really fascinating. Um, and, and I'll put a link to it in the description. There's a great video from a channel that I really like called Engineering Explained, which 
you know, back in uh, a while ago, figured out the zero to 60 uh, speed or acceleration uh, physical limit based on the best uh, braking distance of any vehicle out there, which was, I think, the Porsche 918 Spyder. So it, this braking distance, even though you don't typically hear about it in the media, is actually super interesting and important from an engineering standpoint. So uh, this, to me, was just a great example of Tesla kind of at its best, right? They get some critical feedback, they talk to the company, they figure out a fix, they push it out within you know literally three days, and the consumers are better off, we're safer, and this thing is 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 is, is resolved. Uh, so I'm curious what you guys think about that. Um, you know, do you like how Elon kind of works and operates? Does it does it bother you? Do you even care? Uh, let me know in in the comments down. below.